welcome to Carver Candidates Night on Area 58 Community Access Media. I am Catherine Gallerani from the Carver Reporter and Wicked Local Carver. And I'm here to introduce you to the two candidates for Board of Selectmen. Uh, first, the incumbent, uh, Dave Robertson, and also Robert Belbin. And uh, we'll ask each candidate to give two minute opening statements. Oh. Incumbent first. Okay, I'll go first. My name is Dave Robertson. I moved to Carver in 1954. I was raised in the school system here and I uh, grew up in this town. Uh, in the town that I grew up in, uh, we had a town hall uh, that was, uh, the upstairs of it was the library and the downstairs of it was a woodworking shop that was shared uh, with the Governor Carver School and run by a man by the name of Mr. Peterson. And it wasn't a very efficient uh, means, but it, we lived within our budget. So that was uh, what I was introduced to. Uh, I did six years in the Navy, 1973 to 79. I have been married uh, to my wife Patricia for 45 years next month. I have one son and I have two absolutely gorgeous granddaughters. One of them is currently in the Carver Elementary School. I would say that I am very pleased in the progress of this town since the time that I was just a young boy. I had time to talk uh, this winter with a real estate agent and the real estate agent was telling me of a young couple that was looking to grow uh, their family and buy their first home. And he said, if you are looking for a town that is financially stable, that is vision focused, with a new elementary school and a new fire station, you need to consider Carver because that is all of the above. I met with a lady who uh, was a, uh, on the finance committee of another town, very close to us, and she pulled us aside, me and another selectman pulled us aside and asked if she could come by sometime and talk to our finance committee, to our finance department, maybe our town administrator and the supporting staff to find out what it is that we are doing because other towns are watching what we're doing because we are very efficient with our finances. This is our town. This is the, this is Carver that they're talking about. And John Kennedy once said, change is the law of life. Those that only view the past and the present are certainly going to miss the future. I don't want to miss the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Belbin, your turn. Hi, my name is Robert Belbin. I lived in this town for over 20 years. Um, I grew up in Pembroke, a small town north of here. Very politically active town. Uh, we used to have a lot of cranberry bogs there. Um, I wanted to grow my kids here in this town because it reminded me of Pembroke. Small community town, lots of cranberry bogs. Uh, everyone knows everyone else's name. <coughs> and that's what happened. We moved here started our kids in the school system in the multi-age program, which was an excellent program we had. Um, got to meet a lot of really, really good people here in this town. Uh, but things changes over the years. Uh, unfortunately, our government really hasn't changed a whole lot. A lot of the same people are in the same positions since I started here in this town. If new people want to be active and involved, they need to stand up and be active and involved. That's why I'm here. I started to see that this town needed somebody to be active and involved in our town. Those active and involved issues really hurt me in a sense with our town politics. I won't be approved for different committees or boards. Why? Because I'm spoke outspoken here? Yeah. I am who I am. You see me on Facebook. You see me at town meetings at selectmen's meetings, I speak my mind, I tell you my opinions. I try to support facts with what I say. I want everyone to be part of our government, but 
if you can't get involved because of your comments that you make, your ideas or your feelings, there's something wrong in our government. Our finance may be good, but they could be better. We have a problem with housing in this town. I agree, we need more housing, but we haven't funded it. CPA money has gone to recreations. We even bonded money on CPA money that we may not have. We put more money in CPA now than the state gives us of a reimbursement. This is wrong. We, we need to look at our town a little differently. I want young people to be able to come to this town and buy a house and live here. But it's too expensive. Our taxes are high and we get limited services. I just read in the newspaper today, hmm, they want to have town-wide trash pickup at an extra cost. How much extra cost? We need to stop this. We need to let people decide. We need residents to decide, and that's what I'm here for. I want you to decide to vote for me as your next selectman. Thank you. What principal challenges do you see facing the town of Carver over the next three years, and how would you propose to meet them? Um, solid, solid ideas on uh, how to do so. Meet the challenges. Uh, Ms. Rovin first. Yeah, the challenges is, number one, the police station, the siting of that. That's a challenge. Um, housing is always a challenge. And our senior population is a huge challenge. Uh, we put them on the back burner for many, many years. We have so many senior citizens in this town that really want to be active and involved they want to have those same type of a programs that are available in other towns, but we don't offer it here. We're starting to. Our recreation committee has been doing a lot of jobs with our youngs, but now we need to focus on some of our senior populations. So housing is a big one. Our senior population and the siting of the police station. What are your ideas for the siting of the police station? It's been a source I feel of controversy. The, <laughs> I feel the police station has two options right now. To move it over so the playground can stay in a nice location beside the library. It can go beside it. There's plenty of acreage there to build it. The other one is where the existing police and fire station through a design that's suitable for their needs. Now, the police station on top of the playground is so wrong. We put money into that proje project I've helped out with Boy Scout projects there. The Boy Scouts have put items out there for the playground. We put CPA money into it. And that's one of the things that, with the CPA money, I don't know what happened, but when the CPA money goes into a recreation process, they're supposed to go ahead and put a covenant that that stays as recreation, that that money for CPA stays there. And now we're saying, no, let's rip away that money that we all put in there, the time and effort that people put into that playground, and move it to some place that will be congested. And I think it's wrong. I think there's plenty of two areas there in the town that's close enough to the center of town to put them in those places, save the playground, let people have fun there, okay? I don't think that the police station building committee, the professionals, they are two, I don't think they've really looked at the benefits of having a police station right next to a playground, because there are benefits to it. And there's benefits to be next to a library. You get education and you get safety. Two of the best things for our kids to know, I'm safe in a playground, not a playground that's down the street in between two ball fields. That's my feeling. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Robertson, how do you uh, respond to criticism of the process involving the police station, but also among the principal challenges? Of course. Um, <clears throat> well, everybody has an opinion, and that's uh, what makes uh, America great. Uh, they're able to uh, uh, debate that particular uh, um, issue. Uh, as far as the police station location is concerned, the siting is concerned, um, it is uh, proven over and over that the public safety element of the location of the police station is needs to be in the center of the town and, and so we all agree on that um, and the placement of the police station 
uh, a little bit down Center Street, uh, does not uh, carry any weight in that if we were uh, advised of somebody who was looking for a police station in a panic situation, yes, there's GPS, yes, there's signs, yes, there's all this technology that tells you where the police station is, but when you're being chased by somebody, um, those technologies or those aspects are uh, played in the back seat. So it is in everybody's best interest to have the police station more visible, out by the street, easy to see, and coming north and south uh, from uh, down 58. So the, the element of moving uh, that is, um, it just doesn't play to public safety, which is what we are basing uh, the majority of our decision on is public safety. The element of using the old police station um, was dis, uh, um, disallowed in our, um, our efforts in that it separates uh, the teams. They have, they'd have to have a two-floor building and every police chief or every police building that we talked to, that we went and visited, they said they preferred not to have a two-story building because it separated uh, the teams and it, it led to uh, not a, um, a unified uh, police force. So we, and the cost for putting it there was uh, just incredible to demolish, move, relocate the police force and then put them back when we were done. You can do it in pieces, but all of that is expensive. So the cheapest way to do it and the most efficient way to do it, which is what Ty Carver is known for, and the public safety sector or, or segment of that uh, is to put it um, next to the library. That's uh, what we have uncovered after a year of investigation. Besides the police station, what challenges, principal challenges? I agree with Bob 100% that the trash pickup in town is going to be a problem. And we need every citizen to uh, come and help us make that decision for a uh, town meeting. Um, we are asking for direction. One of the, I'm on the uh, Carver Marion Wareham district, um, I'm on the board, and one of the things, the three areas we can go with, we can continue down the road of um, having somebody um, come pick up your trash, or you can do it yourself, or we can look to have a, a quote uh, for a townwide pickup. Um, no matter what direction we go in, the cost of doing business after 2020 for p trash pickup is going to increase. The, we have a deal with, had a deal for 20 something years with CMAS, Cavanta, and that ends at the end of 2020, and they are going to uh, start charging us. They gave us free trash all this time, um, so it, it is inevitably going to increase. Which avenue we take, we are asking for the town to help us make that decision so that they are part of the process of choosing what's best for them. So come to town meeting and uh, make your vote. But I agree with Bob, it is, trash pickup is gonna be a big one. Uh, transparency, transparency in town government has been raised as an issue by, among some people. And how do you ensure it's transparency as a selectman? That's a great question. I, I, I suffer with that uh, in that um, one of the things that uh, we don't do well is we don't uh, respond to Facebook um, uh, allegations. We don't respond to uh, Twitter statements. We don't respond to Instagrams. Um, and I don't, we, I went to an annual meeting in Boston with the Mass uh, Municipal Association and the Selectmen Association, and they had a, a seminar on uh, uh, communications and today's communications and how to better communicate what is going on. And they hired uh, this particular uh, town that was presenting, they hired somebody to be our 
um, uh, a communication um, specialist, and they put everything on Facebook, and they responded to Facebook and so forth. But that cost money, and we didn't want to spend more money uh, for an employee to answer questions. So we do suffer with that. I'm not. It, it is something that is very difficult. We've asked recently asked uh, the town administrator to just put just details of what's going on uh, on a Facebook page, uh, but we can definitely do better. And I'm I I think. Facebook may not be the answer, but I don't know what is right now. So I'm, um, but transparency, I, I would say that uh, come to the meetings. Um, not everybody can do that, but it's televised. Um, a phone call, uh, Mark Townsend, myself, and uh, other selectmen. We've had uh, town um, a selectman hours where we would sit at the uh, town hall uh, for a sec for a certain amount of time, and we would welcome people to come talk to us, to give us direction, to help us make decisions. And we've never had anybody visit us from the whole town for, for hours. And nobody's ever called me. I've, I got two emails one time. So transparency, I don't know how to beat that. But I'm, I'm, if somebody has an idea, I'm willing to absolutely listen to it. Mr. Belden, what do you think? Wow. <laughs> I'm all about transparency as you see on Facebook. Um, I spent hundreds of dollars and my wife would kill me uh, if she actually knew the total amount of how much I paid for information requests from this town and other towns to see what's going on and to try to connect the dots from one to another to another. Uh, transparency is a huge issue here in Kava. When you have emails that go back and forth from the town administrator, to town council and then to finance or to selectmen and you come to find out that wait what were you doing what precipitated this issue there's one email that I have and it really irritates me that the finance committee chairman gave me their packet they sat there and discussed the merits of a grant program a grant program. We at town meeting, we decide if we give money to nonprofit organizations. They file a petition, it goes before the town, we vote for it or against it. I've spoke at town meeting against different nonprofits getting money. I've investigated some of these nonprofits and some don't give us any information. I sat there on the phone waiting and waiting, can you give me? And I get hung up on. I don't like that. The one year that I turned around and did it again, I got so much information from South Shore Community Action Council. They were awesome. They told me everything. This is what we spend on this, this, and this. I'm like, wow, they do a lot. So at that town meeting, I asked to increase that money. Let me bring it back to this email. We have another program here in town. We used to have a food pantry. It closed down. Shane's Gives Thanks came forward and started running the pantry. It's down in the center of town here, across from Our Lady of the Lord's Church. You need to go in there and take a look at it. If not to get food, if you need it, go in there and talk to them during it's open. It's incredible how many people from Kava take advantage of that service. This year they filled a petition out for $6,000 to help with their cause. That petition was put in to the clerk. The clerk got ahead checked off all the names, make sure that it's good, it's a good, send it up to the selectman's meeting. Email was sent to town council. Town council responded to that to our town administrator. <coughs> what did he say? He said, it's not against the anti-aid amendment if we do this at town meeting, but you can do a grant program instead. Well, the grant program, what they want to do is they want to decide what programs they're going to bring to town meeting. That's not how we do things in this town. We don't need that. If we need to know what's going on, bring those people into the selectmen's meeting, or we can have a town meeting committee created. And the town meeting committee will look at it and come back and report. This is what the information we got. Explain it to town meeting, and then town meeting decides. We don't need somebody to tell us this is where we're going to spend our money, especially if we're giving it to really good 
nonprofits that are doing something for my town. Shane's Gives Thanks, they were targeted. They were targeted for a purpose, and it's wrong. And I want to make sure that people know what that email is. I asked it to be released by the chairman of the FinCom, and he has yet to do it. I have it. I will bring it to town meeting. I want people to know this is the type of information that I will bring to you. That's the transparency I will give you. I will make sure you know what's going on. I will make sure any email that goes to our town council that I get a copy of it. I will make sure that if that needs to be released, it's going to be released. If it has something to do with our town residents here, there's going to be no hiding behind client privilege. Sorry, it just can't happen. People need to know what's going on in this town. They can't be hidden away anymore. I want you to be your selectman, and that's what I want to be. I want to be transparent. I want our selectmen to be vocal. I want them to speak out. I want them to talk. I want them to let people know that we're here for you. We're not here for public interest. We're not here for a police department. We're not here for a fire department. We're here for the public. And as selectmen, that's what we're here to do. We're here for you, the residents. I'd like to give each of you the opportunity to ask the other a question. Um, Mr. Belbin first. Okay, um, I don't know much about you, okay, because we never really met a talk. And you say about um, opening up and people don't come to your um, open sessions that you have, your selectman time. Well, I think there's a reason for that. And it's not just you, but it was other selectmen too. I've been to other selectmen and talked to them about different things. Um, why don't people want to come and talk to you? Well, I think that uh, the people uh, that know me, that have raised, have been raised with me and grown with me, uh, they understand uh, that I am open and I am honest and I attend to business. The people that seem to have questions, they would rather ask them, I believe, on a social network than face to face. And so the people that meet me in coffee shops or in sandwich shops or in restaurants, they are very open about the questions. But I don't know why the people that do the most complaining are the ones that don't come visit me. They seem to want to just say it on social media. So I think that's the answer. Mr. Robertson, it's your turn. Um, I would uh, love the opportunity uh, to know um, your feeling on the uh, why the police station um, shouldn't be in a uh, safe zone, that it should be somewhere else, as you've said. So when I started the look at the police station of different options of where it could be. Uh, one of the options I actually thought was off of Pond Street. Um, all the, it's near the DPW building. Um, it's right next to the high school, which if there's issues, they're right there, which there was an issue with um, them putting the wood floor in and the nail gun issue. I don't know if you heard about that, yes. but yeah. it was scary. And the, I have to say for the officers involved, it was scary because it they rushed. It was a huge present very quickly there. Uh, so their response was awesome. I respect the police department. I respect the police chief so much in this town. This has nothing to do with the police chief, police officers, or even public safety. This has to do with a placement of a police station in an area that's accessible to people. Now, you brought up face the GPS, cell phones, yeah. But every fire station has a call box also here in this town. And we have three of them, North Cava, South Carolina, and Center. We have a Taj Mahal of fire stations. That's what everyone calls a Taj Mahal, because it's huge. Um, some of the things in the police station, they may not need right now. But if you put it beside the playground, leave the playground there, there is places that you can expand back. 
And if you want to put a second floor, you can. There's no reason why you can't have a second floor, all right? Uh, one of the things that was said was, well, you have to put an elevator in and then you need to have two staircases and that takes away spots. Okay, so we can still do that, all right? Will there be costs? Yeah, but it'll still be in the center of town, what they want, all right? And if we don't, there's really been no activity. If we take away the police station where it is now, there's, what are we gonna do with that property next? They haven't said anything what they're gonna do. They wanna keep the fire station in front, but hmm, what are they gonna do with that? EMS building, maybe, but you have to have those plans in place. You need to know if you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. You have to have those plans in place, but no one wants to tell us what it is. You've got to have something in the back of your mind as officials for it. Um, dealing with the police station, if the police station is further down on Center Street, I, I come home from work in Beth Israel at night, and I'm driving, and I get to the set of lights there, and all I can see is this bright blue light underneath the overpass. That's a police station. I know it's a police station. When you drive up, it used to be accessible from the front. Well, you can't do that now. You have to go around the corner behind the gas station, okay? They proved that it doesn't have to be on a main street in front of the center of town. It doesn't have to be. It can be moved over a little bit. Hanson, there's not in the center of town anymore. It's moved over. There are plenty of opportunities here in this town that we can put a police station and have everyone happy, okay? It's just basically it's a contest between this group and this group and we have the power to do this and they really don't but we're going to put it to town meeting which is great i love that opportunity for town meeting to make it so hey go to town meeting and vote for it i just hope if it votes to move the police station over or them thinking where else they can put it that it doesn't revert back to the selectmen to say well guess what we're going to overrule your decision we're going to do it anyways because that was the original vote at town meeting was to give us that right to do it. That's my fear. And that's the fear of other people too. So that's my reason. I, I think it can be done. I think everyone can be happy if we just move it down a little bit or put it where the old police station is. Our time together has passed very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for closing statements. One minute each, please. Mr. Robertson. I hope I can read this in a minute. <laughs> I have a prepared statement, sorry. Town of Carver continues to operate like a fiscally and socially responsible business focused on providing quality services to our citizens. Our town's employees are dedicated, loyal, energetic, mission focused. Employees are a company's or municipality's greatest asset. If you want to attract and retain the best, you need to provide them with encouragement, stimulus, and make them understand that they are an integral part of the town's mission. We have a great team caring for our town. Any in any business, operational efficiencies drive financial economic stability. Our policies and policy changes have demonstrated sound management of the resources we have. Examples of these policies not limited to the centralized information technology department to be shared with our schools, combination of the operations and maintenance departments, Middle High School Sports Complex built under the tax levy. Major rehabilitation of the middle school. $100,000 solar project funds improved for bond ratings. I'm on the Carver Marion Wareham Refuge Regional Disposed District Board. We continue to restructure the district after it was discovered to have been mismanaged. I've been a part of this process and undertake the day-to-day -day management of the district to rectify administrative and financial issues as well as plan for the future. I am on the Police Advisory Committee for Carver. Although this project has hit some roadblocks along the way, I have been part of a great town debate. The details of this debate are not important here. What is important is the democratic process which have been followed, the right for everyone to be heard. The democratic process means that citizens can actively participate in the decision-making process for our local town government. 
as in any company, municipality, church, marriage, organized social groups, there are issues that need to be addressed. There will be differences of opinions to the resolve of these issues. That difference should not be a line in the sand to separate us. Those differences should be our strength. I am flexible in my approach to an issue. I have a keen eye for what is best for the town. And this is why I'm asking for your vote in April. Thank you and God bless. Mr. Belvin. Well, no prepared statement for me. As you see with my shirt, I'm a little different, okay? I'm not a suit and tie wearing person. I work hard for my job. I'm a phlebotomist and a lab assistant at Beth Israel Hospital. I've been working in the healthcare field for well over 20 years. I've worked for this town in the EOC system as a radiation liaison. I spent 10 year, almost 10 years in the military as a medic. I've worked in Boy Scouts for many, many years. Baseball, I was coach and we came in second place. Came from the bottom, worked our way to second place. Great, kids were awesome. I care about this town just as much as he does. I just see things differently. I want the public to be welcome to meetings. If you feel like you're gonna go to a meeting and the selectmen have already made up their minds, no matter what you say, why should you go? Why should you go to see somebody who's not gonna look at things a different way? Who's not gonna look at how you're saying it, what you're saying, your passion, say, okay, fine, but still I'm gonna vote any way I wanna vote, doesn't matter. I'm not that type of person. I'm gonna listen to people. I'm gonna go ahead and work for you guys. I'm gonna give transparency. I'm gonna make sure you know what's going on in this town. I see people around this town every day I drive around. From town employees, senior citizens, young folks, students, and I have no problem sitting down and talking to them, asking them questions. They're asking me questions, what's going on? The best times of kids is sitting around a campfire and talking, hearing their points of view. We're here for everyone. Our senior population has been thrown to the side numerous times. We have all these senior parks here. So many bright people that wanna do things for this town and they don't think they're included at all. And that's wrong. I wanna be your selectman. I wanna be sitting at that table representing you. That's what I am. I represent people. When you talk about social media, it's very important that people understand that social media is a great outlet. Yes, you get bickering back and forth, this opinion, that opinion. It, it happens. But if you read what they're saying and you take that opinion to what they're saying to heart and say, okay, fine, I understand where you're at. We may not agree and that's fine but you have to be respectful. Unfortunately, one of the selectmen didn't respect me or some of my fellow friends by calling us names. I haven't called them names, I'm not going to. I have a big shoulders here. I'm willing to pit my shoulders for you to put your issues up to here. Then I can bring them to the selectmen's meeting and I can let those voices be heard. I wanna be your outlet. I wanna be accessible and I am. And if you have any problems or issues, you come to me. Other town officials have come to me. I've had other board members and committee members, instead of going to other town officials, have come to me instead because they don't trust them. And it's sad. And I've had some of the people that I really haven't cared a lot about in this town as officials that have surprised me, really surprised me. Well, this is the type of person I am. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to speak up for the people that can't speak. Thank you very much. Please vote for me on election day. Robert Belbin. Bye. Thank you to both candidates for the Board of Selectmen, Dave Robertson and Robert Belbin. The election is Saturday, April 27th. Thank you.